Okay, uh, let's pray. Father, we submit this day into your hands, this time into your hands, even as we uh, look in, uh, read into your word, learn from your word. Lord, I pray that, uh, Holy Spirit, you would come and have your way. And let's prepare our hearts, uh, our minds, uh, to receive your word, to hear from you what you have to teach us, Lord. Help us to be receptive. Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, it's good to see you all. It uh, seems like I haven't seen you all in a while, but it's only been a week. <laughs> but good, good. Uh, all of you all are doing okay? Health and all. Yeah. What happened to the white shirts? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, you do. It's okay, guys. Chill. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to put you in the spot. I'm mean, just asking. So, good, good, uh, good to see you. Also, um, we uh, in the the week before last week, we started talking about moving prophetically in uh, in worship, right? Uh, so, what can you say about what we learned in the last class? From not the last class. Last class, we were outside. Uh, the week before that. Uh, moving prophetically in the worship, uh, in worship. What are some of the pointers that you remember um, that we discussed, that we spoke or learned? <clears throat> it, it it involves. Okay, yeah. prophetic worship follows the leading of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, okay. What else, guys? I mean, without looking at the notes, do you remember anything? Right. Something. All right. It releases God's power. Healing, deliverance. Okay, yes. Vimal? Uh, finishing the notes, very nice. <laughs> I think that's like the last thing you saw. Oh, the prophetic was edification. Okay, so <laughs> we didn't even discuss that. Okay, last class. So I've been a teacher for a while, Vimal. I have been a teacher for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, what else, guys? I mean, what are some of the things that we've discussed that we learned? Yeah. Speaking his heart, okay. To a person, yes. All right. That's basically God's speaking through man to man, isn't it? that's one of the definitions that we looked at? Uh, all right, Shira. What's one of the things that we looked at? What do you remember? He's just nodding your head. Okay. Sri Radha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So, okay. We looked at so many aspects of it. We started off by learning about um, music in prophetic worship, right? Just music. One of the words that we looked at was zamar, which we've already learned, right? It's a Hebrew word for praise, uh, which means to pluck the strings or to play an instrument, isn't it? So that's music. And then we looked at how it's connected with the prophetic. So we looked at a couple of examples of how Samuel tells Saul that, hey, as you go searching for, uh, as you were searching for the donkeys, uh, he says that you will be meeting a lot of prophets who will be playing an instrument. Yes or no? So we saw music. We saw prophetic. Uh, we see prophet Elisha asking for a musician to come. And we learned about David's tabernacle, where all these three comes into play, isn't it? Music, worship, and the prophetic. It all meets together in one place, and that is in my tabernacle. David's tabernacle. King David's tabernacle. Yeah, are you with me so far? Yes? Okay, right. and so few some of the characteristics that we looked at uh, in it's in the notes. Uh, some of the characteristics of a, the prophetic word and how the Holy Spirit communicates is one of the things is an impression in our hearts. 
okay? An impression in our heart, an inner witness. Okay, look at that uh, word, witness. Um, can someone uh, very quickly uh, read Revelation chapter 19, verse 10? Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Hi, Shiv Kumar. Hi, Nina. Hi, Prabhu. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 1910. Revelation 19, right? Yes. 19? Verse 10. I was like, which book is that? Sorry? Okay, testimony of Jesus is the? Okay, so testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, in the notes, we looked at this one word called inner witness, isn't it? Yes or no? It's in the notes, right? In brackets, it says um, an impression in our heart and inner witness. Okay, now in Revelation 19.10, it says the spirit of prophecy is the? Testimony, everybody say testimony of Jesus. Now, what is a testimony? What's a testimony? Testifying about about Jesus, about or someone, right? Testimony in general. Uh, some of you are just too young for for you to remember a Many, 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 many years ago, there was the first one of the early social media platforms was called Orkut. I know nobody knows that. <laughs> Orkut, O R K U T. Okay, so uh, it uh, anybody knows what Orkut is? Yeah, Nina. Okay, so we we are in the same boat. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, so there you could write test. Uh, there was a space called testimonials. As in, another person can write something nice about you, uh, you know? So it's like, okay, Prince is so wonderful. Uh, I like this about you. You are so-and-so, you da-da-da-da-da, and all of that. Okay, so that's a testimony. So basically, another place where you, where do you see testimony, which is very important? There's one place uh, where testimony matters a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I just couldn't get <laughs> the, way, the way you said it. I was a... <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. Like, I'm just having a bit of laugh. <laughs> he said, Touch. Ah, yeah. So if people come and say, you know, there's a time for testimonies in some churches and all, right? Like, does anybody have testimony? Uh, so you will come up and say, you know, we got this. I did. I was going through this, and this happened. God came, you know. He healed me. All of that is a testimony. And, but there's there's another place also, Prince. <laughs> testimony, witness, witness, testimony. In the court of law, yes. In the court of law, so there's a false accusation over me. I'm in, in the cage, and uh, <laughs> Prince is on the opposite side of the cage. And so now he is going to testify because he's a witness, right? He Because he saw, and he says, OK, Roshan did not do that. I was there testifying for me. Are you with me? Are you following? Yes? So. Revelation 19.10 says, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So to make prophetic very simple is when you testify everything what Jesus has done. You take the Gospels. This book that you and I are holding, it's prophetic. 
okay this book is it's it's living it's alive it's alive and it's prophetic in nature so when you read the gospels and you say hey okay jesus you know he healed the sick he cleansed the lepers he <clears throat> you know he healed the blind and what not he raised the dead what are you doing you're testifying about what, who jesus is and what he's done are you with me Right, even in your own life, right? When you, why do we have this time of testimony in church? Is, is so when we come up here and I, when I testify, okay, so I had a shoulder pain, God healed me, right? So you're testifying about who? About the pastor who prayed? About Jesus, isn't it? So when you say, okay, God healed me, you're testifying, okay, this is what Jesus is. And so because it's prophetic in nature, because the word, the Holy Spirit is alive, it creates an atmosphere for God to redo that uh, miracle. Okay, so that means, and I'm standing up here and saying, hey, God healed me uh, from my cancer or whatever I'm going through, right? As soon as I'm releasing that word, the spirit of prophecy, Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. I'm testifying about what Jesus is, what he's done. And so there's an atmosphere that's being created for Jesus to redo that miracle. So if there's anybody else in the congregation or in the crowd who's listening to this testimony, and who's got cancer, it creates the atmosphere for that cancer to live as well. Are you with me? So prophetic is more powerful than you think. It's not just a gift that people used to, you know, say, show off. Or you say, okay, oh, this brother moves in the prophetic very powerfully. You know what I'm saying? We've reduced the gift of prophecy to like a, some kind of a gimmick. Are you with me, class? I want you to understand it's not just a gift for you to show off. But you can show off when you're showing off Jesus. Right? It's more powerful that way when you understand the power of what prophetic, uh, prophetic worship is, right? Okay, uh, are you guys with me? So that's the first thing. So uh, some of the characteristics of the prophetic word is uh, the impression in our heart, a flash of information in our spirit, quickening scriptures. These are some of the things that we've covered already. I'm just going through it. Uh, a knowing on the inside, pictures, a word, sentence, paragraph. So uh, God can release a prophetic word through any of these, uh, any of this uh, way. Right? Are you with me? So in during a supernatural, uh, one of the things that we do is, okay, will God say something to you? Right? It could be a word that he gave you. It could be a picture that you saw. Yes? So all of that, you guys have already experienced what we are discussing or what we are talking about. Okay. So what are some of the characteristics of a prophetic word? It brings edification. Now we are learning about it. Okay. So right, everybody say edification. Right. A prophetic word, it brings edification. That simply means you are growing. Okay. You are growing in confidence. Uh, encouragement, so it brings edification, it comforts us. I'm not going to go through all the scriptures that's mentioned in the Bible, uh, in the notes, um, but you please go through it, okay? A prophetic word, it reveals God's plans and purposes, okay? It reveals God's plans and purposes okay one of the examples mentioned there is about Zacharias uh, who's the father of John the Baptist right it talks about uh, in Luke chapter 1 uh, but there like I said this whole book is examples of that prophetic word uh, reveals God's plans and purposes uh, every time he spoke to the prophets Isaiah Ezekiel Daniel Obadiah Micah all the major prophets and the minor prophets. He revealed what's God's, what's his plan for the nation of Israel, what's his plan for his people, etc. Are you with me, guys? Right, and the prophetic word it stirs up and causes us to move in faith, in warfare. It gives us the uh, encouragement uh, for us to move uh, in authority, in faith, and in warfare. It provides motivation and strength to carry. 
It releases God's power, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs, brings correction and restoration as well. Okay, so for the longest time, when I was a kid, uh, if a prophet came to any of the meetings or home to pray, <laughs> I would. The idea that I had was, uh, you know, the prophet would come and say, "I know what you did last night." You know what I'm saying? So the that <laughs> so it brings uh, so one of the it is it is a characteristic of a prophetic word, but the idea, or the mentality of people, or the people who the person who was moving in the prophetic was, it is just to condemn. You see how you can misuse the gift of prophecy, right? Are you with me? So it just condemns. It just makes you look like okay you're the worst sinner ever there is no redemption for you you are on your way to hell and there's no turning back kind of a thing so that was my fear is like anybody can, oh boy i'm gonna hide myself so that he doesn't know he doesn't see me and whatnot right uh but that's but that's not it but the prophetic word also releases that it brings correction it has to bring correction and that will lead to repentance in this case the example is Prophet Nathan, when he confronts David, right? David did everything uh, wonderful, right? Uh, you know, he, he committed adultery to cover that up. Uh, he commits murder, and the list can go on. And so he thought, no one, no one will know because I'm the king, <clears throat> right? I'm the king, uh, but God knew. God saw, so he sends prophet Nathan to confront him. So a prophetic word brings correction, but it doesn't end with correction. It also brings, what's the word after that? It brings correction and, it brings correction and restoration. Okay, our God is a restorer. He restores. Okay? It brings uh, conviction, repentance. Uh, it transforms nation. Right, guys? So are you, are you with me? OK. So these are all the characteristics. Let's go through the characteristics of the prophetic word again. What does it do? It, it brings edification. It reveals, it reveals God's plan and purposes. and and causes us to move in faith, provides motivation and strength to carry on, releases God's power, brings correction, causes conv conviction, transforms nation. Okay? Um, you know, there's one of the points there, and I think point four, oh, yeah, point four, it says, provides motivation and strength to carry out God's purposes and plans right uh, we all need a prophetic word in our lives we all need you know God to release his word over our lives because not every day you wake up and you feel like a superman right not every day is going to be like a good day you know have a good day ding ding ding, ding. you know <laughs> right we're going to have horrible days right bad days can become the worst days ever and you feel like I'm good for nothing uh, you're worthless and whatnot and that's when we need say a prophetic word God releases words that hey I have a plan for you plan to prosper and not to harm you right? to give you a future and a hope right and so when you hear that because the word is alive what it does it quickens your spirit like, okay I can go I can do this one more day right and so it's so important that again you all as classmates and friends and whatnot uh you, you not everybody here will know what everybody is going through yes or no not everybody here will go through you know will know what someone is going through and that is why it's important for us to be sensitive to god's voice 
And maybe God wants to use you to release a prophetic word over someone who's going through something and you don't know that. And that can be a word of encouragement, isn't it? Right. So prophetic word is uh, it's it's more powerful than you guys think. Okay. So we studied about the prophetic word. Now let's look at the prophetic song. Okay. Now a prophetic song accomplishes everything what the prophetic word does. Are you with me? Should I say that again? Okay, a prophetic song. It does everything what a prophetic word does. That means prophetic song will bring edification. Prophetic song can reveal God's plans and purposes. Prophetic song can stir your heart to move in faith and in warfare. A prophetic song can give you the strength to carry on. A prophetic song can release God's power. Prophetic song can bring correction and restoration. Prophetic song can cause conviction. Prophetic song can transform nations. Okay. All right, so all of everything what a prophetic word uh, can accomplish uh, uh, can be done with the prophetic song as well. So what are some of the points there? Prophecy is expressed in song some of these ways. Uh, look at your notes. It says, songs to the Lord. Uh, Psalm 33 verse 3, sing a new song is often sung when God does a new thing in our lives. Right? It says, sing to him a new song. Psalm 40, verse 3, he has put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it says, For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praises to you. Now, this is Jesus singing to the Father. Right? He's saying, I'm, I'm not ashamed to call them my brothers. And in the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Prophetic songs of exhortation, exhortation to people, uh, which includes songs that the Lord Himself sings over us. Songs of declaration over demons, circumstances, and, or nations. Okay, how many of you realize the power of a song? Power of a song. Why is a song powerful? Why is a song powerful? How many sermons do you all remember? How many songs do you all remember? At least five? More than five? Say at least. Why do, uh, I mean, kindergarten teachers teach kids uh, A, B, C, D in song? Or anything to remember, right? Uh, there was a Sunday school song to, uh, with, uh, I was taught. To remember the books of the Bible, I forgot the song now. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, something like that. You know, I am a C, I am a CH, I am a CHRISTIAN, I have a CHRIST in my H E A R T and I will L I V E E T R N A L L Y, something like that. No, so, so songs are beautiful. Songs help you remember things, right? Songs are are declaring, okay, uh, something, um, and. That's why I have processed life is through uh, songs and worship and whatnot. Uh, but okay, one example. So this is uh, again, this is about the United States of America, right? Um, during the Second World War, uh, when most of the soldiers were gone to war right? between 1939 and 1945, was the Second World War history. Okay, uh, I'm sure you all know that. So <laughs> that's when the Second World War happened. So most of these Christmas songs, not sure if you remember, um, I'll be home for Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. Uh, and then I'm, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. And uh, so a lot of these Christmas songs were written during the World War period. Uh, it's the soldiers writing to their family members saying, I'll be home for Christmas. 
you know, a lot of those things. So, uh, and then family members would write, uh, you know, letters back to them. It was written in the form of a song. And so it was beautiful. And we sing those songs even now, right? And then there was another war. Uh, it started in the late 60s. The USA, United States went to fight with Vietnam. Okay, Vietnam War happened. So and that had that lasted for a long time, at least 25 to 30 years. During that period, there was so much of hatred of people in the United States against soldiers, against the armies. Right? They would write songs saying, don't come back. Uh, we don't need you. We it's basically saying that they hated them. Right? And so when the soldiers came back, they felt hated. Like they felt like they did, they did not belong, and so there was a huge uh, spiritual shift as well in the land. Okay, uh, there's one quote, and I forget who said that quote. It says, um, uh, "Tell me who are, who's writing the songs of the country. I'll tell you who's ruling the country." I'll say that again. Okay. Tell me who's writing the songs of the country, and, and I'll tell who's ruling the country. So basically, songwriters so, right, have the power to prophetically release God's kingdom over our land. Are you guys with me? Right? OK. So all of you are excited. Very good. OK. <laughs> OK, so the next page. Um, sorry. Right. Uh, the Hebrew reference, please. Oh, it was uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, uh, Nina. It's in the notes. So, Okay. Um, prophetic worship, uh, some practical guidelines. Okay, This is for us to develop in uh, prophetic worship and some of the guidelines that you can do. Um, first one, prepare yourself. And how you can prepare is develop depth in prayer and in the word of God. God. Okay, develop depth in prayer and in the word of God. Um, because so in the last 25 years or so, um, 20 at least years, we've spoken so much about worship. Worship has become this movement all around the world, like you know, it's like amazing. And very little teaching on prayer. But in the in the previous century, at least from the 1900s all the way to 1990, uh, there was endless teachings on prayer, and somewhere from 1990 onwards uh, till now, uh, we've spoken a lot more about worship and very little about prayer. I'm not saying we've never spoken or taught, uh, but uh, prayer is important. A develop depth in prayer and in the word of God. Okay, so how many of you love the Bible? I believe, right? right? Yeah, I believe you. Yeah. I, I trust you, okay? So, yeah. Okay, uh, it's beautiful, guys. I mean, uh, if you have not been spending enough time reading it, uh, so we all have those days when you don't feel like reading or, you know, uh, and whatnot. Uh, but don't treat this book or reading this book as a as an assignment or as a homework kind of a thing, right? Like, oh, I have to do this assignment. And, uh, I have to do this homework. Uh, I have to get up and read one chapter every day. Uh, you know, it's um, John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God, isn't it? Um, so when you're actually when you're reading this word, is you are getting to know more about Jesus because He is the Word, right? And that's what I tell my the worship team as well is when you are singing the word. Right? One example we did right uh, some time ago, we sang from Psalm twenty-seven. Right? Uh, we just open a psalm and you start just singing, isn't it? Now, when you sing the word, okay, when you open up your Bible, when you just start singing, 
you are not only singing about Jesus, but you are singing Jesus because he is the word. Are you with me? Okay. So uh, develop depth in prayer and in the word of God. Um, prayer, especially praying in tongues, builds sensitivity to the spirit of God. Pray in the spirit. Okay. The Holy Spirit draws out and releases songs based on the rich deposit of the word. If we are not strong in the word, we may not be able to determine if something that we sense in our spirit is of God or not. If we are not strong in the word, we may not be able to determine if something that we sense in our spirit is of God or not. Okay. This applies to both those who are ministering in worship and to us who engage in worship as a congregation. So that's how you prepare yourself. Basically, pray and read the Bible. Okay, that's basic. Uh, so you, you prepare, you expect. We are exhorted to desire spiritual gifts. Uh, to desire is to have a strong feeling of wanting something. So Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians, he says, desire. Then desire for spiritual gifts, okay? And then be sensitive. Become prepared, expectant, and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, It is possible to be preoccupied with worries, distracted by what's happening around us, and therefore lose sensitivity to the leading of the Spirit of God. Okay. Um, worship leaders, uh, this is for you guys who are leading who lead worship but then it's applicable for everybody else as well um so when you're leading worship at least in a band and a big congregation there's a lot of things that's going on in your head at least a lot of things goes on in my head okay so uh, if i'm leading worship at central there are about 500 people um so i have to remember the songs I have to remember the words. I mean, nowadays we have iPad and TV and all. <laughs> uh, I have to remember the chords of the song. Yes. What chords to play when? I have to remember the structure of the song. OK, intro is two times, verse only once, chorus two times, ending, bridge three times. I have to remember the structure. Then I also have to pay attention to what the drummer is doing. Is he playing on time? Is he doing easy? Does he remember? Is he stopping the song correctly? I have to remember. I have to keep in mind about everything that's happening on stage. With me, right? So I'm making sure the keyboardist is doing what he's doing and all of that. So my mind is, I have to remember what I have to do. I also have to make sure everybody is playing the right thing. I have to lead people in worship. It's like, okay, lift your hands up, clap your hands, sing the song. I have to lead that. And then I have also have to be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, leading worship is a little hard, okay. <laughs> it's not as easy as it may seem. Uh, but that's when that, that switch has to go off. It's like, okay, all, all of that is important, but I'm going to just... Continue to lean in. Okay, God, what are you saying? What are you doing? What are you saying? What are you doing? What do you want to do? Okay, that is being sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, so sensitivity uh, be um, when the worship team encourages us to sing out loud in our own words and language. Uh, let's join in and sing without worrying about how we sound. Um, sing in tongues. Another way to start singing spontaneous song is to sing out your own words. It says, <clears throat> when the team prophetically sings and repeats a line or a phrase for which the lyrics are not on the screen yet, sing anyways. OK, so those are all just some of the practical stuff, guys, isn't it? So if you want to take your congregation, um, to move in the prophetic as well. One, you have to be patient. Okay, uh, you can't just wake up on Sunday and say, okay, congregation, today we are going to move from just being normal worshipers to prophetic worshipers. <laughs> okay, uh, that's not going to happen. You have to be patient with your congregation. You have to teach. Uh, 
and help them trust you uh, that okay you are you are sensitive to the leading of the holy spirit okay so any questions regarding prophetic worship so far Zephaniah, yeah. Zephaniah three seventeen. Um, so why don't you read that verse? Zephaniah chapter three verse seventeen. It says, "He rejoices over you. He dances over you with singing." Yeah. So uh, let's see. It's a very poetic way of saying that he sings over us, as in he rejoices over us. He's uh, he's in love with us. Um, so that's basically what it is. As in, you mean? Are you asking me what songs he sings? Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, okay. Uh, how can we take what's what what the songs that he's singing over us? Yes. Yes. You see, again, so. Okay, I'm I'm sure he's saying. I don't know what songs he sings. Okay, but then it's also a poetic way of expressing that. Okay, so he rejoices over us. So he starts off by saying that he rejoices over you. He dances over you. I mean, uh, so one of the uh, okay, we all know the word called joy, right? Joy. The root meaning or the root expression of the word joy is to jump and spin like a top. That's what joy actually means is you jump and you spin like a toy so when you say he rejoices over you rejoice comes from the word joy isn't it is i i mean it's just that a father celebrating his children like uh, i mean it helps me to see that because i'm a father and i see how i celebrate my son right you know i i sing to him like i say you are my sunshine my only sunshine you make me happy when skies are great, you know, I, it's like I sing that song to him, and now he learns the song. So, it's it's that image of a father that he he loves us, he rejoices over us, he wants the best for us, um, he's madly in love with us, and so that's the explanation. Thanks for that question, Anand. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so the question is um, about teaching the congregation about prophetic worship. Who should be teaching the worship leader or the pastor? Uh, I mean, I, I would say both. Uh, pastor should teach as well because, again, he's, uh, he's a senior pastor or whatever, right? So he has to teach the word. So teaching is his main responsibility as well, right? Of of many of the many, and also worship leader because he leads worship or the worship pastor, uh, because he is the worship pastor can also teach. So yeah, it's it's both of them's responsibility, I would say. But it starts off with the senior pastor who says, "Okay, we are going to do a series on worship, and we are going to learn prophetic worship for the next three weeks." And so week one, I'll teach. Week two, okay, worship. This worship leader is going to teach or preach, whatever. So. You plan it out like that. Sorry? Yeah, spontaneous worship. OK, so prophetic worship and spontaneous worship. So uh, we, I think we were discussing that a couple of weeks ago. Um, is So the difference between a prophetic worship and spontaneous worship. Now, spontaneous, that word simply means on the spot. Like on the spot, do something. So if I ask you, okay, Anand, uh, just come and lead worship, I'm putting you in the spot, right? And then you'll take the guitar and you'll start singing, say, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, right? Or here I am to worship. 
So you are leading worship spontaneously, but what you're singing is not a spontaneous, it's, it's not a prophetic song, but you're just singing a song on the spot. Are you with me? So, but a prophetic song, uh, I mean, a spontaneous song, worship can also be a prophetic in nature. It's like, okay, I'm going to ask you to lead worship. You come up here, you take the guitar, and you start singing something that you've never sung before. Are you with me? You start singing something that you've never sung. Um, so there was this, uh, actually from Zephaniah 3.17, what we just read. Um, so I remember this moment where um, we were singing the song called Still. Uh, how does the chorus go, Still? When the oceans rise, when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Okay, Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know your God. Okay, so we finished singing the song and we were just dwelling in the moment. We were just, we were not in a rush. And, um, and so the worship leader spontaneously and kind of prophetically starts releasing Zephaniah 3.17. He starts singing the verse, the song, the words of that verse in the same tune of the song. It's like, I will quieten your heart with my love. That's what that says, right? I will calm your every fear. I will dance over you with singing. I will be yours and you be mine. So it's in the same melody as the still chorus, but it was this, this words were released as spontaneously, which was prophetic. So not all spontaneous worships are prophetic, but spontaneous worships can be prophetic. Uh, prophetic worships are also spontaneous. So. Sorry, say that again. Okay. If you don't have any set list. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, just what we. What? Oh, so you change the set list or oh, one of the songs. Yeah. So that is just a spontaneous moment. It's not prophetic because it, like new song. Ah, that's a prophetic song. So okay, let's say uh, I have a four song set list. Give me a song, guys. First song. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Second song, Blessed Be the Name. You all know the song. Okay, third song. Great are you, Lord. Okay. Princess, give me all the songs. Fourth song. Here I am to worship. Thank you, Vimal. Okay, so we have these four songs, right? What is it? What's the first song? <laughs> Bless the Lord. Okay, 10,000 reasons. Okay. 10,000 reasons, Blessed Be the Name. That's the second song. Third song is uh, Here I Am to Worship. Oh, the fourth song is Here I Am to Worship. Great are you, Lord. Okay. So after two songs, uh, Blessed Be the... Uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's the second song, right? Okay, so let's say you, you finish singing that song. You're having a moment. What's the pre-chorus of the song? Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will sing. And you're just, maybe you're singing that verse again and again. You're getting the congregation to sing, and you feel like, okay, there's something in that. And maybe that can lead to another song. Right, uh, which uh, maybe you were just feeling spontaneously. So, any song that is already written, let's be the name or uh, say, Then sings my soul, my savior, God, to the you're singing a song which is not in the set list, but that's a no, but that's just a spontaneous moment. Let's say it's not prophetic. So, you're singing something that God is putting in your heart and you've it's never been sung before. That's a prophetic worship. So Singing the scriptures is is just an awesome way to uh, prepare yourself to move in the prophetic. Um, there were two worship leaders in my life, uh, two different, very different kinds of worship leaders that I learned a lot from. 
the one worship leader is who I was in the band with for almost 12, 13 years, Nixon. Um, so every time we practiced or we were preparing for the set list, he would make he would sit with the team. And you know, and he was a worship leader, and so he he will have a series of five songs. He'll explain why he chose every song. Okay, I chose this song because I felt God was doing this. And so a set of five songs will be like one big song. He's like telling a story. Right? So for me as a musician, now I trust him. Okay, because the worship leader knows where he is going. Right. Now there was another worship leader. Uh, he never gave a song, set list. He never gave any song, like, you know, but maybe he'll say, okay, we'll, we'll start off with this song. But he would never start with that song. And it, he would move in the prophetic worship, I mean, just so amazingly. Uh, and so that's how he won my trust. Is like, okay, he's super sensitive to what God is doing. Yeah, he is super sensitive to what God is doing. And so now that's another way he got my trust. So the point here is, if you're going to win the congregation to move in the prophetic, if you're going to win the, your team members to trust you, it all comes down to this one thing called trust. Because everybody wants to know in the room, do you know where you are going? Okay. If you know where you are going, I will follow you because I trust you. Are you with me? Right? So you can only take someone to a certain place only if you've been there. But these days you have Google Maps. But <laughs> right. You guys with me? OK. So uh, we'll stop at that. We'll take a break, and we'll come back, and we'll resume with the rest of the session. Okay. See you guys in a bit.